Well, let's get into it again. Let's get into the Word of God again today. Amen. Let's get ready to go into the Word of the Lord. As you see, amen, our topic again, amen, this is part three of another Jesus, amen, another Jesus. Paul spoke to the saints, to the believers there in Corinth, amen, about them accepting another Jesus. This is also, amen, how the spirit of Antichrist, the mystery of iniquity, has already begun working and working in the churches of then and today. All right, let's go to it, amen. In the book of 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter and verse 1, Would to God ye could bear with me in a little folly, a little of my folly, and indeed bear with me. Now notice that he said, bear with me, put up with me. You know, it's something how people have respect a person. Paul is saying, here I would to God that you could bear with me in a little of my folly. Uh, let's read on. He said, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For, now watch this, we're talking about, bear with me. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. I've already been there. And I've already talked to you about Christ. I've told you about Christ, the Son of God. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, you might not bear with me, he said, but ye might well bear with him. You might accept him. He preached another Jesus. You might very well bear with him. You might accept him. You might not uh, oppose him. Uh, Paul was very aware. Apostle Paul was very aware of the church of Corinth. Their vulnerability. Amen. They were subject to be deceived. They were subject to be misled. They were subject... Amen. To be put on another track, to be uh, 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 refocused, to be sidelined, to be distracted, to be diverted, to be seduced, to be persuaded. He said, for another gospel, you might very well bear with them. Amen. Uh, let me ask a question here, right here. What's wrong with uh, 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 saying Christ? What's wrong with saying the name Jesus? Or uh, we are we we have taken the spirit of Antichrist, Amen. The mystery of iniquity that already now work. When we read the Word of God, we read Apostle Paul and the other apostles speaking of Christ. We see of them talking about the doctrine of Christ, the commandments of Christ. Where did we get holiness? Where did we get Baptist, where did we get Kojic from? If in the scriptures, and we said this, I believe, in our last video, the scriptures only speak of the doctrine of Christ. Where did we get the doctrine of holiness from? If it's like saying the doctrine of Christ wasn't enough. It's like saying saying Jesus is not enough. Just like saying uh uh I'm being like Christ is not enough. You gotta say I'm holiness. Well, what's the difference? If they are synonymous, if being holy means being like Jesus, then why not leave it as the scriptures? Why not stay within the perimeters of the scripture and just say, I'm just being like Jesus? Why we got to say, I'm trying to live holy? Why not say, I'm living like Jesus? I'm going to be like Jesus. That's what the scripture talks about. What's the difference? If they are synonymous, then why change it? And I'll tell you why. And it's not just holiness. It's Baptist. Is, is Kojic? Is it uh, Catholicism? If, if not, why? Because if you change the name, then you can change the narrative. If you change the wordings, then you can change what it means. 
if being holy means being like Jesus, why not just simply say, be like Jesus? That's what's in the scripture. Paul preached Christ. You never see him say, I'm preaching holiness. I'm preaching this or I'm preaching that. I'm preaching Christ. We preach Christ unto the Jews, a stumbling block, unto the Greek, a rock of offense. But to those which believe Christ, the power of God. Amen. Why? John preached Christ, that which was from the beginning. We have no need to preach anything else but Christ unless there is an ulterior motive. Unless there's some uh, something else that's at work. Are you listening to me? Amen. All right, let's go to uh, first, Second John. Second John, the Second John. Let's read this. Get your Bible, because you know we go. We, we believe in reading the Word of God. We believe in going through all the Word of God. The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth, for the truth's sake which dwelleth in us and shall be with us forever. He's talking about Jesus. Grace be with you, mercy and peace, from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son, not Father, the Son of the Father, full of the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly. Apostle, Paul, Apostle John was dealing with some of the same issues Apostle Paul was. I rejoiced greatly that I found thy children walking in truth, walking in the ways of Christ, walking in the commandments of Christ, as we have received a commandment from the Father. God said on the Mount of Transfiguration, this is my beloved son, hear him. And now I beseech thee, lady, though not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning. That we love one another. Jesus said, upon this rock I build my church. Jesus said, I, my commandment I gave you, that you love one another. That's the beginning of the church. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. Christ's commandments. What he said in Matthew 28 and, and 19. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. This is the commandment that ye heard from the beginning that ye should walk in it. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. I don't care what it looked like if it don't confess that Jesus is come in the flesh, that the hierarchy or the preeminence of the church today is not your pastor. <laughs> That's what he's saying. That the hierarchy, the preeminence, the head of the church is not your apostle. That the head of the church is not your bishop, your elder, but Christ in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Now, notice he's warning and the saints of God, not the world, but the saints. Look to yourselves, watch yourselves now, that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Verse 9, whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ. Notice that. He didn't say abideth not in the doctrine of holiness. I got to be real specific now. He didn't say abideth not in the doctrine of Kojic. He didn't say abide is not in the doctrine of Baptist or Catholicism. He gave it, he, whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. Abideth in means that you are obeying, you are following, you are keeping. If you abide in the dark, not in the doctrine of Christ, you don't have God or Christ. And, but if you abide in Christ, you have both the Father and the Son. Verse, verse 10. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, bring not the doctrine of Christ. If they bring some other doctrine, the doctrine of holiness, the doctrine of Baptist, the doctrine of Kochi, if it's apart from Christ, 
We want to say it's synonymous, but if it's synonymous, then why not just say Jesus? If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, this teaching, the teachings of Christ, receive him not into your house. Now look at what he said. Now notice and remember in biblical days, the house, they didn't have, they didn't erect places of worship. They had the temple, but they didn't have other places of worship. They met in the houses of the saints of God. You recall the Bible talks about the church that was in the house of Aquila and Priscilla. Uh, uh, uh. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, the doctrine of Christ, they saw the need to, for, to tell the believers to contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. What is the faith that was once delivered unto the saints? The faith of Christ. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The faith of the doctrine of, of the law was tried in Acts the 15th chapter. The faith of the, of the doctrine of the law and grace was tried in, in Galatians the 1st through the 3rd chapter. Amen. That was not the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. The faith that was once delivered unto the saints was what Jesus said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth have faith in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, the doctrine of Christ, receive him not into your house. Don't let him in your place of worship. Neither bid him God speed. Be blessed in your journeys. Be blessed. Don't bless him. If he's not bringing the doctrine of Christ, don't bless him. If he's not bringing the doctrine of Christ, don't support it. If he's not bringing the doctrine of Christ, don't become a part of it. Because what? For he that biddeth him God speed, verse 11, for he that biddeth him God speed is partaker of his evil deed and spreading a false doctrine, a false gospel, a false spirit, a false Christ. For he that bendeth him God's speed is partaker of his evil deed. Now let's stop right there. You can finish it. Uh, his salutation, I believe, is verse 13, 12 and 13. Let's move on. Now what was he talking about? I believe, abide in the truth. He was talking about abiding in Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now he said, he that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. Isn't that what he said? Then, but then he said, he that abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, he hath not the Father nor the Son. Then in 2 Corinthians 11 and 4 we read, Paul said, if there come any unto you and preach another Jesus, he was afraid. If they come and preach another Jesus, if they come and preach another gospel, if they come and you receive another spirit. And let me say this, there are many, there's the spirit of the churches have, are changing from a spirit of love to a spirit of hate, from a spirit of, of receiving to a spirit of rejection and oppression and opposition. That's not the spirit of Christ. Jesus said, whosoever will, let him come. But we've got churches now that say, don't you come in a certain way. You can't come here in any kind of way. you got to come a certain way. And if you don't believe what we believe, then you're not a believer. That's not the spirit of Christ. And the Bible says, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. All right, now he said, but Paul said, if one come preaching another gospel, preaching another Christ, preaching another spirit, Paul said in 2 Corinthians 11 and 4, you might well bear with him. This was how the spirit of Antichrist invaded the churches. You remember he said in 2 in second, in second Thessalonians, he said the, the mystery of iniquity doth already now work. He was talking about the spirit of Antichrist. How did we get away from Christ? Because we started preaching another Jesus. We started preaching, instead of preaching Christ, we started preaching holiness. We started preaching this. We started preaching that. We started talking about David. We started talking about Goliath. We talk, started talking about uh, uh, Abraham. We now, those people are good. Hebrews 12 and 1. 
What does it say? Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, they were witnesses. They were not the, the head. They were witnesses. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, Hebrews 11 chapter, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Verse 3, looking unto Jesus. He didn't say looking unto Moses. He didn't say looking unto Abraham. As we said on the other day, Abraham had to be saved just like Moses. Moses had to be saved just like David. David said, my Lord won't leave my soul in hell. They all had to be preached to by Christ when he died and went into the lower parts of the earth and led captivity captive. They had to receive Christ as well. The focus of the church has always and will always be Christ. And unless you preach Christ and him only, then that's where the door is. See, if you try to preach Christ and holiness, you try to pre preach Christ and the law. You try to preach Christ and anything. After a while, and I've seen this happen in churches, after a while, the spirit of Antichrist, you won't be preaching Christ at all. You'll just be preaching holiness. And this is what is taking place today. And the danger is that not only will you just be preaching holiness, when you stop preaching Christ, eventually, as Jesus so told the church of Sardis in Revelation, the, the third chapter, those things that are ready to die, if you stop preaching Christ after a while, you're not going to even be obeying Christ. And this is the door through which judgment comes. This is the door through which judgment and chastening comes. This is why John said, whosoever abide, what did he say? If there come any unto you, verse 10, and bring not this doctrine, the doctrine of Christ. God is very specific. There is no salvation in anybody else but Christ. He sent his disciples to do nothing but preach the commandments and the gospel of Christ. That's all. Anything else is a perversion. If there come any unto you and preach and bring not this doctrine. He said, don't you receive him in your house. Neither bid him God speak. For he that biddeth him God's speed is partaker of his evil deed. And when you support, when you give aid to, when you support a false Jesus, when you support a false gospel, when you support a false spirit, then you bring the judgment of God. For he that biddeth him God's speed is partaker of his evil deed. And this is where the judgment of God comes. We were talk, we're going to talk about the judgment of God. Why? Because you are supporting something that is not of Christ. Jesus said in Matthew the 6th chapter and around the 20th around the 21st verse, if not the 21st verse, he said if that I be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. If thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. If you're looking at one person, Christ, then your whole body will be full of light. He said, but if your eye be evil, you're trying to look at holiness and Jesus. You're trying to look at the law and Jesus. Or anybody else and Jesus. Your pastor, your apostle and Jesus. Now your eye, your focus has become evil. And when you start following them, and this is where the judgment of God comes, Colossians 2 and 8, Paul said to the church of Colossae, Beware, lest any man spoil you after the philosophy, through the philosophies of man, vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. We begin following men that were not following Christ. And we have entered into a time of the judgment of God. For he that biddeth him God's speed is partaker 
of his evil deed. When you start supporting something that is not supporting Christ and not preaching only Christ, then you enter into a place of vulnerability. And you enter into a place where you're subject to be, you're subject to the judgment of God. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? You're subject to the judgment of God. Many a times we see things happening in the church. And we write off in Acts the fifth chapter, Ananias and Sapphira fell dead in church. Now God can take us anywhere. But when you start seeing people die in church, let me say that again. When you start seeing people die in church, in church, that's a sign of the judgment of God. He that hath an ear, let him hear. The Spirit is speaking to the church. Now let's look at the word of God. He that bid him God speed, he said, is partaker of his evil deed. He that bid him God speed or supports him is a partaker of his evil deed. Now we must follow Christ, abide in the doctrine of Christ. Let's look at one of the commandments of Christ. One of the commandments of Christ. Ephesians 5 and 11. We're going we'll to deal with this judgment. He said, verse 10, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have, Christ gave this commandment, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Have no fellowship. When you see an apostle not doing and following and keeping the commandments of Christ, or you see them violating the commandments of Christ, such as uh, 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 calling people fools, when you see people, apostles, not following the commandments of Christ, which means to receive. He that receiveth you, receiveth me. He that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. Loving, forgiving. And, 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 and all the commandments of Christ. When you see a minister not fulfilling and following and abiding in the commandments of Christ, and you give aid. To that minister or that ministry, you set yourself up for the judgment of God. You set yourself up for the judgment of God. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. That's what Christ said do. Don't have no fellowship. We cut fellowship off with the wrong people. Because they're not of our church. They're not of our group. They're not of our clique. No, he said don't have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. When you see somebody walking contrary to the commandments of Christ, that's when you're to break fellowship. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. But we can see that. And because we are captivated by people and by places and things and churches and church names and titles, then we, see, we seek to continue to follow. We are under great responsibility. An obligation to Christ when we take on Christ as our Savior. Now you've got to obey me. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. And if I tell you to break fellowship and you keep fellowship, then you set yourself up for the judgment of God. Let's look at what Christ said. Luke 12 and verse 37. Verse 47. Luke 12 and verse 47. And that servant, which knew his Lord's will. See, ministers, ministers long time ago, they stopped preaching Christ a long time ago. And they stopped following Christ a long time ago. But people kept following them. And they brought the judgment of God on them and on the people that followed them. That's why Jesus said, if the blind lead the blind, they both going to fall in the ditch. You're going to suffer the judgment of God. And that servant, which knew his Lord's will. And prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. He ain't talking about the world, y'all. He ain't talking about the sinner. That servant that walked in disobedience knew his Lord's will. But prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. And then you've got those that follow them 
which were the angels of the churches, and those that followed them, but he that knew not, verse 48, and did commit things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes. Now let me say this right here. I've personally experienced that. I was following a minister, my pastor, doing what I thought was right. And he told me as far as dealing with other members that had left the church, he told me how to deal with them. And I did it, thinking, okay, I'm doing what's right. I didn't mistreat them, but I cut the fellowship. And I didn't listen to them. I didn't hear their side. And you know what happened? I got judged for it. I got whooped for it. That's what the judgment is. The, whoop, the chastening of the Lord. He that knew not, thought I was doing right, but did commit things worthy of stripes, he said he shall be beaten with few stripes. And this is what we see taking place today. Wake up. Even in the days of, in 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, concerning the, the taking of the Lord's Supper, listen to what he said. Verse uh, uh, 27. 1 Corinthians 11 and 27. And he ain't talking about the world, y'all. He's talking about saints. Wherefore, whosoever eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. And this is just talking about the, 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 the taking of, of the Lord's Supper. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Verse 30. Watch this. He's talking to the saints. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you in the church. He ain't talking about the world. Many are weak and sickly among you because you took but took of the Lord's Supper unworthily. There was sin, unrepented sin in your life or disobedience to Christ in your life and his commandments. You were unworthy, but you took it anyway. He said, for this cause many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep. You mistreated your brother. And he said, before you bring your all your gift, you go be reconciled. But you didn't do that. And you unreconciled to your brother, took of the Lord's Supper. You un, un, unreconciled to your brother, kept on trying to preach, kept on trying to give your offering. God ain't accepting that stuff. He said, for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you. He said, and many sleep. Some, the chastening of God had extended even to death. But when we are judged, for if we would judge ourselves, verse 31, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. We, the saints, are chastened of the Lord. Many of you, you're going through because you're supporting a spirit, you're supporting a doctrine, you're supporting a Christ that is not the right Christ. And until you see that, and understand that he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. And as long as you support what is not of Christ, you bid it God speed. You're going to receive the judgment of God. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. We are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Many of us, many saints have gone on. I'm persuaded, I, yeah, I'm going to say it. Many of them have gone on, I'm persuaded, because of the judgment of God. Why so many dying? This is judgment. Many weak and sickly among you. This is judgment. Hebrews. 
12. Hebrews 12. Where are we at? Hebrews 12. Now look at this. 12 and 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. What Christ has said, he ain't got to keep saying it to you. If it's in the word of God, and I'm told you to search the scripture, if you don't obey it, that servant which knew not, you're going to be chastened. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. Hebrews 12 and 5. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. He ain't talking about the world again. Despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. And scourge, and the word scourge means to beat. They scourge Christ. They beat Christ. And he said in Luke, shall be beaten with many stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes. This is the judgment, the chastening of God, for whom the Lord loveth. This is not an act of hate, an act of, of rejection, an act of damnation. He said, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth. Every son whom he received. If you endure chastening, God dealing with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Let me say this. Well, let me let's just read the word. But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all the partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. All the partakers. I've been saved by the grace of God now for I think going on 40, 40, 40 some years, maybe 45 years now. I, I, I don't keep count of it, amen. That's not important as long as I'm saved when Jesus comes. That's what matters most to me, amen. But, but, but I have never been able, never, and I thank God for it, I have never been able to sin or disobey a commandment of Christ and go on with peace. If our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart, 1 John 5, 3 and, 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 and 20. If our heart condemn us, then God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. If our heart condemn us not, then we have faith toward God. But some of you, you done rolled past the judgment of God. You done rolled past the warnings, the rebuke, the chastening of the Lord. So long that now some of you, your conscience have been seared with a hot iron. I never will forget. Years ago when I started pastoring my first church, there were people there that were doing things and, and, and treating people different ways and, and even not, not being obedient and walking in love and obeying Christ and obeying and following the ministry. And they would still jump up and shout and, and test a lie. I said test a lie. I didn't say testify. I said test a lie. And test a lie. And, and, and me and my wife, we, what's going on here? These people, they jumping around, shouting, going on like they walking all in the will of the Lord and can't be still. But you know what it was? It was another spirit. <laughs> See, that's what it was. It was another spirit. It wasn't the spirit of God. Hi! Every, that, 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 just, any, anybody can make noise. It don't mean that's the spirit of God. Paul said you received another spirit. The spirit of truth will lead and guide you in all truth. The spirit of truth will show you your error. Show you where you wrong. And he ain't going to leave it alone till you repent. But many have gotten beyond chastening. God don't chasten me no more. Me and your pastors have gotten beyond chastening. They've done things wrong for so long they can do it now and don't have a don't have a conscience of sin. It ain't that it's wrong. It ain't that it's it, it's all right. It ain't that what they did wasn't wrong. They don't have the spirit no more. They don't grieve the spirit. The spirit done departed. You've been following the flesh. When he tell you not to love people, when they tell you not to give the people, you following the flesh. And you incur the judgment of God. For he that biddeth him God speed is partaker of his evil deed. Let's, let's finish this. Let's finish this and we'll close this out right here. Uh, uh, verse 9. 
Well, let's read verse 8. But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all the partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit that we may be partakers of, our, of his holiness. You cannot be holy without walking in the footsteps of Christ. You cannot be holy and not keep the commandments of Christ. I don't care what you do. You can, you can wear a dress down, ground rubbing the flow. You sweep the flow squeaky clean. Your face can be so clean, a fly clean laying on it. You outwardly look good. It's got to be on the inside as well. Now, ain't nothing wrong with looking good on the outside. I, I compliment that. But it's got to be on the inside well. Jesus talk about, talked about the Pharisees and the scribes. They look white like white as sepulchers or white graveyard. You ever pass by a graveyard? It look all white and manicured and clean and, and the yard kept and everything. Underneath all of that is dead bodies. On the outside, it looks good. You don't see what's going on on the inside. And a lot of people, a lot of saints on the outside, hey! But on the inside, it's full of darkness. In the inside, is unforgiveness. On the inside, is respect the person. Disobedience to the commandments of Christ. That we might be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness and them which are exercised thereby. I've seen this happen too. I've seen God chasing and the believers and the saints of God. Thank God. Nobody rejoiced over anybody. I'm not rejoicing over anybody's suffering. Don't get me wrong. I grieve. I hurt. When I, when I see my brethren hurt, I hurt. When I see my brother and rejoice, I rejoice. Don't matter. We, we, you can be in the church that I come out of. I love you. And I don't rejoice when I see my brother and go on to be with the Lord, my sisters go on to be with the Lord. I, I don't rejoice when I see anybody uh, uh, suffering. I'm praying for you. But the result, the purpose of it is that it might you might see this and receive the chastening of the Lord and be corrected. Now let me say this right here. God don't chasten you without letting you know what he's chastening you for. Did you hear that? If your parents just grab you and start whooping you without telling you what you, they whooping you for, or when they got through whooping you, telling you what you got a whooping for, that's abuse. And God is not a child abuser. I've had God to chasten me. And every time God chastened me, I say it every time, it's been more than one, been saved 40 something years. Oh yeah, you didn't have some chastening. <laughs> you didn't have some chastening. And every time God has chastened me, I knew exactly what it was he was chastening me about. Otherwise, how do I know what to repent about? How do I know what to stop? But God chastens us and lets us know what it is. Then it's up to us to change. He tells me to preach the word. You take it and throw it on the ground. One king took, took Jeremiah's word and cut it up with a pen knife. It don't change the word. It don't change what Jesus said. He said they're not going to receive your, your word because they're not going to hear my words. Talking about the world. He said, world 4, verse 12, lift up. And I want to close this out. I want to close it out with a good note. Because I know the Bible said preach the word in season and out of season. A lot of that I just said was out of season, but it's, it's what needs to be said. And I have to say it because your pastor is not going to say it. I got to say it because your apostle is not going to say it. Your bishop not going to say it, so I got to say it. Wherefore, lift up the hands which, which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight path for your feet. Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but rather let it be healed. That's what God's chastening comes for. That's what God's word comes for. He sent his word to heal them. He says the word to help you, to show you what's wrong, then show you how to come out of it, how to, how to stop this chastening. Verse 14, and we'll close out. Follow peace with all men. 
if I've heard, heard you, and I ain't talking about the preaching of the word of God, if I've hurt you any other kind of way, I'm sorry. Brother Moore, sorry. I repent, I apologize right now to anybody, everybody I've hurt. I'm not talking about the word of God now. I'm talking about personally, and I don't know of anybody that I've hurt. That's why I got to say it like that. If I knew exactly that I hurt you, I don't have no problem coming to you, telling you, brother, sister, calling you, whatever, brother, sister, so-and-so, I did so. I'm, I'm sorry. I've done it. But now, I don't have, my conscience is clear. Spirit bears no no, no condemnation on my heart and soul. But if you feel like I've offended you, I've hurt you. And I'm not, again, I'm not talking about the word of God. If you feel like I've hurt you, apart from preaching the word of God, I don't apologize for that, then I'm sorry. I apologize for it. I ask your forgiveness. And I've forgiven anybody and everybody that's done anything to me. I've already done that. Done it more than once. Just read that next verse. Let's, what did it say? Looking diligently, lest any man fall of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. See, you can't hold on to unforgiveness. I know that. You can't hold on to bitterness. I said a long time ago, I said, I'll be, I'll be broken. I'll be broken, but I won't be bitter. I refuse to be bitter. Now, people may have said that I'm bitter, have said that I'm trying to, I'm angry. No, <laughs> if you know me, and those that know me, those that are in my circle, in my, in my association, uh, the closer you get to me, you see, you see, I'm a very joyful person. I'm a very crazy person, if you want to put it like that. Amen. But when it comes down to serving the Lord, I'm very serious. I'm serious. Amen. And I don't apologize for the word of God. Amen. But we need to pray one for another. And if you see your brother going through. I do it. If I see my brothers, no matter what church you're going to through, if I see your post on Facebook, if I see you, and I see you going through in your body, my heart don't rejoice. I'm praying for you. If I don't ever, you don't ever hear me say it. I'm praying for you. I don't have to pray in the presence of other people. I'm praying for you. I love you. I want you to go on with God. I want you to go on. I want, we are, I want to rejoice with my brothers and sisters in heaven. Not see them lost. This is why we've got to preach the word of God. For he that biddeth him God speed is partaker of his evil deed. I just can't side with you in your wrong. I can't side with you against Christ, but I do love you. And may the Lord bless you till our next video.